Hi, I'm Angela Nicholson, Head of Testing for Futures Photography Portfolio, and I'm going to take a look at the Nikon D7100 in this video. Like the Nikon D3200 and D5200, the D7100 has a 24 million pixel sensor, but Nikon has left off the low pass filter. Low pass or anti-aliasing filters are usually put over a camera's sensor to reduce the risk of Murray interference occurring when photographing subjects with a fine pattern. The downside of using them is that the image is softened and needs sharpening post-capture. So does emitting the filter from the sensor make any difference to the images? Our tests indicate that it does. At the lower sensitivity settings, the D7100 can't resolve any more detail than the D3200 or the D5200, but the images look a little sharper straight from the camera. And when the sensitivity is pushed up a little bit, the D7100 can resolve more detail than either of those two Nikon cameras, although the images are also a little bit noisier. Another interesting feature of the D7100 is that the central point of its 51 point AF system is sensitive down to f8. This means if I mount this 70 to 200 f4 lens via this 2 times teleconverter, the camera will still focus the lens automatically, despite the fact that the maximum aperture is reduced to f8. The focusing takes place while the aperture is wide open, in this case f8, and the aperture closes down to the selected aperture for the exposure just before the shot is taken. As you've seen before with Nikon SLRs, in continuous AF mode, the camera can be set to track the subject using 51, 21 or 9 AF points once you've selected the starting AF point. There's also the 3D tracking mode, which works well provided the subject colour contrasts well with the surroundings. It's not a good choice for shooting team sports where the players have matching shirts. With a decent lens mounted, the focusing is fast and accurate in most situations, even in very low light. Inside the D7100 is the same XSpeed 3 processing engine as Nikon's other recent SLRs, including the D4 and D800. This allows a sensitivity range of ISO 100 to 6400, which can be expanded to ISO 25600 if necessary, although I wouldn't recommend that. This engine also enables a maximum continuous shooting rate of 6 frames per second. However, this can be pushed to 7 frames per second if the 1.3 times crop mode is employed. When this mode is activated, the crop area is indicated in the viewfinder and the crop is applied to both RAW and JPEG files. It's useful if you want to frame a distant subject tightly and reduce file sizes, but many users are likely to prefer to crop post-capture. Like the D7000, the D7100 has a collection of JPEG-only special effects that can be accessed via this option on the mode dial. These effects can be previewed on the main LCD screen and are selected by rotating the thumb wheel. Helpfully, the word effect is visible in the viewfinder, so you can't forget which mode you've selected. The D7100 feels nice and solid in the hand, and this silky textured grip gives good purchase. All the most important controls are within easy reach, and you can check settings by pressing the info button. This button here allows you to change some of the key features, such as the image area and noise reduction settings. It seems odd that this also gives a quick route to customising the use of the preview and function buttons, though. The D7100 is capable of producing superb images with lots of detail and natural colour. It's worth keeping an eye on the image histogram view though, as the matrix metering doesn't always do what you expect. For more information, read the full review on techradar.com. 